<clears throat> what is up guys, Dark Force, welcome back to another Pokemon Wi-Fi battle with just for the course, the Scavenger. And uh, yeah, our first DPL game this time. And uh, we're going up against Maiden Dude or the Brishan Rhydon or Ab, the president. <laughs> um, and yeah, I met this guy before and it was in my um, league final in the LBA a few years back or so just one year can't remember. I don't feel like it was such a long time ago. It was Generation 6 at least. And um, he won that game barely. It was a super interesting game. And I was not like mad about the outcome or anything like that because he played that game excellently. So I know going into this game that this is a guy who knows what he's doing. And that only amplified the situation itself. Now, the team that he's bringing is mostly what I expected. Uh, outside of D6 they have here is of course Muck Murkrow. Hoop and Blissey, and I had a feeling that Blissey might make it, so it's a Pokemon that I did adjust for just in case. But outside of that, this looks the part. Mega Absol, uh, Blaziken, Conferricus, Rodent Wash, Cartana, and Ipowdon. So a very, very nasty core on his side, and uh, there are a lot of suggested themes here on, you know, how I have to tackle it. And I think I brought the right team, and that's that's a good thing. Uh, I have the Sidyard with Colberberry. Um, it's a special variant because the physical one doesn't make sense for this particular matchup, mainly because of Rodom being able to burn me, and so is Confericus. So, we have Energy Ball, Shadow Ball, Uterine, and Roost. Um, and then we, of course, have um, Araquan, I can't remember his name. Um, simplified version with Left Doors, a bit of the bulkier side. Uh, has Liquidation, Hidden Power, Fire. Uh, toxic and I uh, believe one filler move uh, for those leech life. Uh, Tapu Koku, probably the main threat for him, uh, and definitely with Blissey not on board, it could do a lot of work. Uh, Thunderbolt, Grass Knot, and um, Nature Nature Madness, and Roost. Uh, Gliscor is a very, very easy the wall breaker set, basically, or the stall breaker set, uh, which is, of course, Earthquake, Toxic, and Roost. And then we have filler move, of course, Hidden Power Fire. Uh, Hidden Power Fire is mainly the for Cartana, so Cartana can't set up in my face. And we're not to it killed by our Cartana, even if it is adamant, I can't stain against it if I am at full HP. Uh, Colbalion with the Shuffleberry is able to take any kind of physical fighting hit from Absol or Cartana. And it has a Sword Stance, Magnet Rise. For Magnet Rise, clearly for your Pound On. And the rest is basically. Just Iron Head and Close Combat, mainly to do as much damage as possible. It does have a good thing going on here. It only is speed EV to actually outspeed a speed your Rotom. Outside of that, I actually have a lot of HP onto it, mainly because he wanted, I wanted to be able to stay in his Dab Soul. And Tauros is, of course, Life Orb Set, Naive, with um, Body Slam, Ice ice Beam, uh, Sin Headbutt, and Flame Thrower. Should be able to hit everything on his team super effectively and really well. So, outside of that, I believe that I lead with this It felt like a good lead here towards his team. So, with that said, let's go into it. So, from the get go, we get an awesome lead. He's gonna start with his Mega Absol. And since my Decidueye, of course, has the Colberry, I know I can U turn against it, get a very, very important amount of shift damage towards it. And even if he goes for Pursuit or, of course, a Knockoff, I should be able to survive it and basically get an important ship damage and then possibly roost against a pound on. That was my initial thought as knockoff is of course his main play here and yeah uh, he crits me and that's just shit. <laughs> so clearly not the ideal lead here. That was really really rough for me. And uh, now I have to do, make the same call with five Pokemons instead. So that was really, really tough. As I'm gonna send him Rain, Rain Brown, knowing that he has to switch out. So I'm gonna go with Nature Madness, really, really hoping that he sends in his Repowered on. But he felt that that was a very, very big possibility. So it actually goes to his Rotom. It's okay also, though, because Nature Madness does force down the 50% of Thunderbolt at this range are a guaranteed KO. And uh, I'm basically gonna go for it. Like, if Repowered comes in, fine. At least get the damage, but he loses his Rotom turn tree, so we lose both our Pokemon in just a matter of seconds in the first turns, and it's kind of interesting consider that this is a very very long match. <laughs> uh, so anyway, I'm gonna switch out Rain Bronze, sending in my Bactus, which of course is my um, delay score, and he goes to Self Rocks as a safe play, and really, really felt you know why didn't I go for Grass now? But at the same time, I cannot lose my. Uh, 
and Cyber Coco towards this team because it's the only thing dealing with his Mega Absol. Outside of that, Mega Absol possibly could actually eradicate my team. As I go for Earthquake here, I should probably go for a Toxic, but I felt that he knew that he could get himself Toxic himself. And I get, I get Whirlwind out, I get Whirlwind to Visor, which of course is our Arachnid. And it's a big threat towards the powder because uh, Liquidation is close to a KO on this thing. And uh, we know from the damage I put that it isn't defensive, it's most likely specially defensive. Uh, which means that I have to force it even further down to be able to kill it with, of course, my Tapu Koku. As it brings in Power Slave, I go directly for Liquidation. And uh, we do a decent chunk here, but the thing is here, due to Mummy, uh, I can now get burned, and that's never a good thing, and I need to get myself out of here. Uh, my best switching is actually Gliscor yet again. Uh, Gliscor is going to make a lot of switchings here time and time again, because he got the hazards up, which means he can keep pressuring me without really... <laughs> without any kind of situation intelligence. So, back is gonna come in, and uh, the, the thing with uh, my Gliscor is that, you know, it doesn't take too much, of course, of Stealth Rock damage, and it can just keeps on pressuring him uh, without necessarily need to worry about it. Now, we did see Pain Split, uh, which means that he definitely thought he was going to go for it, the excess damage, which is fair, as uh, Poison Hill, of course, recover exactly as much as the Stealth Rock is doing damage to him, which is something I need to keep in mind. As uh, so we get the Confericus Toxic, now the thing is here, he's going to go for Toxic Spikes which is really really tough for my team because I do not have a spinner for this team I did decide against it or rather I thought that my team was not weak to hazards while that is true Toxic Spikes does carry a lot of pressure for the Pokemon that can't recover themselves Cyber of course Arachnid and Tauros so they are basically on a timer if they come in he's gonna decide not to actually switch out gonna to go back to the Maidem Madar and I do believe I go directly for Night Play for it maximizes damage output and I really felt I have no reason not to go for a Toxic here. I really, really need to do it because Hippowdon can just keep on coming. And it felt very likely that he will now go for a Slack Off. Uh, he's actually going to switch out. He's going to make an excellent play going back to Mega Absol. And of course, the Toxic is going to bounce back. Um, issue here uh, because of Moonshild or the Absol being able to learn Ice Beam, I know it's a very, very big possibility that he's going to go for that. So I'm going to sit in 5 4 knowing that it's the best play on his side. He goes Rex for Ice Beam, it's great mainly because it does of course um, confirm my suspicions as uh, he's definitely gonna switch out feeling that it could be Scarf as it goes around his Power Slave. I actually went for an Iron Head feeling that it's a very very big possibility that Confericus comes in and while I do a lot of damage on it, I really will do a lot of damage. It is still in a situation here where I can get burned and I do not want to tell myself to get burned. Um, don't like the situation and uh, quite honestly it just it will force me down eventually so um, the list score is gonna come back in and I really felt disgusting using this set because this is a flash set that uh, damns his defensive Pokemon towards me as it goes for pain split I know that this is a matchup that I can win even with he pain splitting in mind toxic will do that much damage towards him that I have no reason not to try to win this matchup and um, I know I felt the same way, but didn't want to switch in and out towards because he's only switching his melee power on, and power on can't do anything necessarily to Blissco, uh, as far as we are aware, because he does have what, what was that? You believe Whirlwind, Stealth Rocks. We he definitely gonna have Slack off, and most certainly the last move on his side will be most likely um, Earthquake as his stab move and main offensive move. Because other than that, then you know Tapu Koko gets extremely dangerous for him. So it forces him down a lot of HP here. I'm gonna keep trying here. I really, really thought that you know next earthquake might actually solve it for me. He doesn't go for a pain split. That is, uh, we barely miss out on the KO, of course, as it goes through a pain split. And um, at this point, I'm pretty much forced to go for a roost. And I know we can keep, keep going back and forth. We can keep going for a split, pain split as I roost, but eventually the toxic will take a toll on him. So I felt that you know he could just as well actually switch out. Uh, I'm not gonna try to, you know, get that last itch damage there, mainly because I felt that, you know, I need to stay, keep myself healthy somewhat, as I am somewhat lucky here that Ab does decide to go for a Shadow Ball, hoping to force me down even further instead of actually pinch splitting me down, uh, which might actually be working against him, since of course, I am now in an area where Earthquake will kill him after Toxic, and I come out, of course, really, really healthy. So, uh, Confarius is going to go down, that is his second Pokemon, and we are a few turns in now. 
There are have been a, quite a long battle, but defensive Pokemon dealing with one another are a slow ride, though it's the only ride I can play for this matchup because Ab will basically not give me any quarters. So Moonshot's gonna come in and I felt, you know, he's gonna go for a knockoff or an ice beam. That's the place he's gonna make and I'm gonna send a rack on it. It isn't too important for the matchup anymore as Confergus went down. As he goes for a knockoff and um, yeah, we are now 4 for 4. So I feel like every time Absol comes in, something dies. I am now in that area and that's not a good thing. As I'm gonna send in Rain Bronze, I'm gonna get myself Toxic and that is, that is just wonderful. That is exactly what I needed, as um, I am in a good position of KO him. Thunderbolt is always going to be on KO on Absol, and Absol can't do it KO me. So that's a really, really good thing, as he's going to send in, of course, his Hippowdon. I actually went for a Roost here, uh, feeling that going for Grass Knob was extremely, extremely risky, considering that I was going to put in a situation afterwards where I could be KO by Absol. So I'd rather try to get myself healthy or healthier, as... Um, about on due to previous moves, we know that this is a special defensive variant, which means I can't KO with. And I'm gonna send him backers, and um, mainly because, well, he can't touch me. He can go for Whirlwind, that's about it. I can't risk getting myself Earthquake. As my main issue towards Madame Madar or the Hitter Powder is clearly that we know we can't break through, right? Uh, we need to get these things toxic somehow, and um, luckily, does say, and I feel you know, Absol could very well be the switching again. But at least then I have like, actually I got myself a bit more healthier uh, with my, uh, uh, what do you call it, um, Tapu Koku. So anyway, he's gonna roar me out and I'm gonna go to Torision, which of course is our beautiful, beautiful Tauros. And here I felt, you know, I could force him down a few HP. Uh, I can go for an Ice Beam, hoping he doesn't slack off and go for an Earthquake, possibly killing me so I can actually get an opening with Tapu Koku. Because as stated here, I need his Proudon to be around doom. Um, around 60% roughly to kill it, and knowing that is definitely something that I need. Now, I do score a crit here, uh, which had me super, super happy, because that meant that possibly the next item could push him down to KO, but he just go for, of course, that nasty, nasty slack off. And what do you know? He is back on track. It's like nothing ever touched him. And uh, at this point, I felt, you know, oh, shit, this is, this is not going to work. I'm not going to be able to force him down like this. Uh, he's definitely gonna try to keep himself healthy enough to not have to worry about me whatsoever. Uh, so knowing that, I'm gonna send him back once again as he actually switches out to his Cartana. And this, this was a nasty matchup from the get-go because I can't KO him with the Hidden Power of Fire um, whatsoever. I actually need to have the ship damage. As he goes for Leaf Blade, uh, it does roughly 100 on me, a little less below. Uh, Earthquake will for force him down a little bit, it's not gonna be a 2-hit KO, but I knew that he's gonna stay now thinking that he could KO me, but after Toxic Heal I am actually now in a range where I can survive the next Leaf Blade, as he goes for another one and we connect the Hidden Power Fire. So this was a matchup we were looking for and it happened and that is just mwah, beautiful. It's beautiful. It is, <laughs> well, in lack of better words, it is exactly what I needed. So with that said, of course, Mega Absol comes back in, and that's an issue, because like I said, every time Mega Absol comes in, something dies, and yeah, we went from 4-3 to 3-3 to three to three in one turn again, and there's really nothing to do about Mega Absol. Now here's the thing, I'm gonna send in Tabu Koku and basically bait him to stay in, I was really, really hoping he would, as I will try to go for a Thunderbolt here, and um, yeah, that's gonna be a KO on him if he decides to stay in. He decides not to stay in, of course, and I'm gonna pause a bit here, because there are situations here coming up that really, really need to be defined. Uh, now, clearly, you know, we, we went for the Thunderbolt, not affecting, you know, that's... It's a ground type, it's a ground type, it's, it is what it is. But here's the thing, he is definitely in the range here where he can survive a Grass Knot. I could switch in Gliss score, but the thing is here, due to me being at 44 HP and I take 22 HP on a switching, if he goes for a Whirlwind, that means my Gliss score is dead. And he also knows that if I decide against it and of course stay in with and go for of course a Grass Knot, I'm not gonna KO the Gliss score, or I mean the, um, the Hip Out on. And uh, I know that he does not want to have the Gliss score back on Adder, because if he goes for an Earthquake, that means that I get a free recovery with my. Gliss score and is back on track to walling his Hippowdon yet again. 
So after I thought of it long and hard, I decided to go for a grass knot. Now, I was waiting 40 seconds after this, just waiting for him to make a call. And it was a nightmare, just waiting. So eventually, you know, he makes the call, you know, we, we're gonna go for it, you know, I feel, you know, Grass Nut is gonna connect, it's gonna do a decent amount of damage at least, and uh, I felt so stressed out about this, I was yo, Ab, do it, go for the Whirlwind, I need you to do this, it's either that or I lose, as we connect the Grass Nut clearly, as you guys can see, it is not a KO, it, because it's so specially defensive, but, he goes for the Whirlwind, I was like, oh, thank god, <laughs> <laughs> we did get that heavy hit. and not only that, we get Glisco in, and the reason that's such a good thing is that I can now roost. Now here's the thing, I could try to go for KO, absolutely, but what's the point in that when I can get this guy healthy again? I need this guy healthy, as um, his power is definitely down for count now, but he's actually going to decide against it and go for his Blaziken, and I thought, oh no. Now is the moment of truth. Is this a Scarfed variant? Does it have even power of ice or anything like that? Can I outspeed it? All those thoughts were going through my head as uh, we are going to see him in C-Move action. And this... What's he doing? Is to go even further beyond! I don't know how we survived that, I, I don't know, um, but the quick will of course retaliate and KO the blaze again, but ah, oh, dear god, <laughs> that was intense, my heart was racing at that point because I realized that blaze again is now my number one threat as it falls. Now here's the thing though, due to this, Tapu Koko can pretty much wrap up the game, there is no reason of being predicting anymore, I am off the hook. <laughs> <laughs> so that basically means that I have to play a pretty much a more of defensive game at this point because I need still to have the electric terrain up to be able to KO the Absol and due to actually poison to get with of course uh, the hazard damage I actually need to roost now so I was hoping it would switch out or go for a sucker punch either way made fine for me he doesn't switch out go to medium Adar as um, I was pretty sure that toxic would kill him uh, because Toxic does about the same amount of damage as his Leftovers. I think Leftovers actually recover him more, meaning that he could potentially try to stall out this series of turns. Uh, because if Elect Electro Train isn't active, that means that Absol can't survive the Thunderbolt. So I feel like that could be his play. Uh, luckily, he does decide against the Disdain and takes the Grass Knot, not trying to stall me out. And uh, we got, of course, KO Madame Adar. And uh, yeah, Tabaku gets his second kill for this game. And. Um, his last Pokemon is, of course, a Mega Absol, and eventually, eventually, we got to the wrap-up of the match, and it took so long. I mean, Ab played this game beautifully, and as stated, had he gone, you know, for the Earthquake or Whirlwind again <laughs> that late in the game, he would have most likely won this match, and it's one of those most intense games I had in, like, forever. So, alright, to the afterthoughts, you know, the game itself. <sighs> We do win 2-0, and I'm really glad about that, but at the same time, I would not have been particularly, like, mad had I lost this match. Maiden Dude or App plays this game beautifully, and while, you know, he does choke on that whirlwind earthquake situation, it was a play I had to make, and I knew a play that he had to make, because he couldn't let Glisker come back, and I knew that whirlwind was his optimal play, and I was really hoping that he realized that too. So it is a blind prediction. It's definitely a blind prediction and basically hoping that I got that opening. And I did, clearly. But at the same time, it's the very same opening that could have ruined me throughout the whole match because I lost Type Cochlear absolutely would have break me apart. Even with, of course, the Coldberry set with my Cobillion in mind, I would still be put in a very, very tough spot. And I know that. I most certainly know that. So, um, yeah, for what it's worth, Ab, thank you so much for this battle. I had a lot of fun, and uh, I don't usually go lengthy battles because I think they're boring. This was far from it. I mean, 40 minutes of just golden material, basically. This was an intense match, and um, 
yeah, I'm, I would be happy either way of this matchup ending. Uh, so that's it, guys. Thank you, of course, so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this battle. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching, guys. And I'll see you guys on the next VPL game. Until then, of course, take care. Bye.